apprehend no danger to our country from a foreign foe. Our destruction, should it come at all, will be from another quarter, from the inattention of the people to the concerns of their government. From their carelessness and negligence, I must confess that I do apprehend some danger. I fear that they may place too implicit a confidence in their public servants and fail properly to scrutinize their conduct, that in this way they may be made the dupes of designing men and become the instruments of their own undoing. Make them intelligent and they will be vigilant. Give them the means of detecting the wrong and they will apply the remedy. So my purpose here is to try to make you intelligent. I'm not going to tell you what to do or which congressman to write to. I'm just going to take the Constitution and show you what the Constitution says. I will ask you to read it for yourself. And then we will draw our own conclusions about what Congress can and cannot do. And then when you sit there somewhat shocked and stunned, then you can decide how to fix the problem. Now, many of you have never met me. Some of you have seen me give a, a short presentation before. Let me tell you up front that I am an iconoclast. Now, an iconoclast is defined as a breaker or destroyer of images, one who attacks cherished beliefs and traditional institutions as being based on error or superstition. Unfortunately, most of what you think you know about the United States is wrong. How many people here know that the Declaration of Independence was signed on 4th of July, 1776? Everybody who raised their hand is wrong. <coughs> Okay. The Declaration of Independence was authorized by the committee on the 4th of July. They took it out and had 28 copies made, and eventually it was signed by August 2nd. And you can come up and read the document here that gives you that information. A small piece of trivia, perhaps it doesn't mean anything, but having the Declaration of Independence signed on the 4th of July is something that we've all just taken for for knowledge, for truth, and it's not. And again, most of what we have been taught about the United States, we've been misled or just misinformed. Now, the very first topic is the difference between rights and privileges. This topic is fundamental to everything else that we are going to learn. That's why I put it first. Everybody's just shown up this morning. The probability that you're going to fall asleep on me in the first 30 minutes is less than you know, the probability that you'll be dozing at the end. So if you are going to stay awake for any information, stay awake for this. If you don't understand this, the rest of the class is basically hot air. A right is defined as a power privilege, faculty, or demand inherent in one person and incident upon another, generally defined as powers of free action, something that you have the sovereign authority to do because there is no higher authority to get permission from. There's nobody to ask. You've heard the expression, the buck stops here. That means you're it. You make the final decisions. That's what sovereignty is all about. You are endowed by your creator with certain unalienable rights. You don't have to ask. Now, this is the exact opposite of a privilege. A privilege is defined as a particular and peculiar benefit or advantage enjoyed by a person, company, or class beyond the common advantages of other citizens. A particular right, advantage, exemption, power, franchise, or immunity held by a person or class not generally possessed by others. A temporary authority granted to you 
by someone of a higher authority. Let me give you an example. If I walk out of the back door of my house and I walk out onto my land, I can walk back and forth, back and forth, back and forth across my land all day long. Do I have to ask anybody for permission? No. It is my land. I own the property. And because I own the property, I have a right to do anything I want with that property. And if I want to walk back and forth across it, I will. Now, let us presuppose that you have the property or the land right next door. Let us further presuppose that I want to walk to the store, which is just across your land. Can I walk back and forth, back and forth across your land anytime I want? No. I have to get permission. It is a privilege for me to walk across your land. Why? Because I don't own your land. You own your land. You have complete and total authority to do whatever you want with your land. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, you may decide to let me walk across your land. We're next door neighbors, we're buddies, we go out, you know, you know, socializing together. So there's no reason that I shouldn't walk across your land. Yes, you may. On Thursday, you may wake up on the wrong side of the bed, you may have had a fight with your significant other, you may just be in a bad mood. You don't have to have a good reason. You just have to have a reason. And you can say, no, you may not walk across my land. You have to walk around. So walking across your land is a privilege granted to me by someone of higher authority, the owner of the property, you. That privilege can be revoked at any time. Yes, you may. No, you may not. Yes, you may. No, you may not. And I have no control over that. One of the fundamental problems in the United States is that the government has convinced us that we have certain privileges granted to us by the government. Excuse me, I have rights endowed to me by my creator. Where does the government get power? We, the people, grant the government privileges. The power comes from us and goes to government, not the other way around. Now, there are some important sublayer concepts with rights, one of which is that rights are derived from property. In my example,